The absolute first step whenever we reflow solder, make sure the wife isn't home. Ta-da! We're on. Okay, so first look at my little creation here. I've got these three uh, larger light green PCBs that I've taped down and I've made me a little fortress thing so that I could slide my real PCB in and the damn thing will not wiggle. That's the idea. Now, keeping the stencil from wiggling is a, a whole nother issue in itself. And of course, when I first got this stencil, I said, what the hell? Why do I have this epic monstrosity? If you could see, you know, the dots in the center of the stencil, I, you know, those are where my LEDs will be. My board is using like one eighth of what, what this stencil is or something. Um, I didn't expect a frame either. I thought I was just gonna, just gonna get a little piece of, uh, I don't know, mylar or aluminum, some kind of small piece um, just to cover the, the area I needed to stencilize. But in fact, they sent me this huge thing that, like from a screen printer. It turned out I learned um, Artu Arturio, Arturio, how do you even say that? On Twitter, uh, he, he told me that, uh, uh, oh yeah, you missed the options. And for, I don't know how I missed them because when I checked JLC today, uh, they were, you know, uh, the options are unmissable, so um, I don't know. Well, pardon me. And so you can see here, I'm I'm adding the uh, solder paste to each of those little, tiny little dots and, and putting a kind of a small mess on all of them. And there's a lot of debate and on how to actually apply those, you know, properly. And to be honest, I don't really know. So I was kind of just experimenting. You know, I just use a business card. I don't recommend business cards for this. Some people recommend things more rigid. And I'm thinking maybe like a plastic, uh, what do you call those little, little spreaders? The, like the putty spreader things you can get for like a dollar. Those might be good for this. But the idea was just to fill up the holes. I mean, you know, a reasonable amount just to cover the insides. And as we'll see later, there were some that I had too much in, uh, too much solder paste on. And I, it's, it's doing this from like a DIY uh, perspective is kind of tough uh, to get that perfect. And for what I'm doing with these individual LEDs that need to be lined up perfectly, it's actually fairly challenging to get that right and um, probably need to rely on like a professional assembly place to do them next time. So here's the grand unveiling. We lift up the old uh, stencil there and there's my creation and uh, what do we got? Well, it doesn't look all that bad at first, and maybe not, maybe even second. Okay, so you can see the solder paste on the PCB now, and they all look, you know, pretty decent overall. Again, they're not perfect. I'm kind of new to this, but, and maybe there's a little bit too much, and like, I know that now in hindsight, but at the time I thought, you know, okay, that's a pretty reasonable amount of, of solder paste to put on there. And here is me going through the life-sucking task of putting on like a, whatever it was, 70, of these LEDs, maybe a little bit more. What's a, let's a, uh, exaggerate, 192 LEDs. Do I look like a pick and place machine? Uh, it's uh, it's tedious, this is not fun, and you gotta remember polarity. It's harder to see on them, on these uh, surface mount components. But it actually, the process wasn't too bad. You put some music on or podcast, you know, uh, pretend you're dead and just get the job done. It's one of those kind of jobs, but um, assembling wasn't such a big deal. I'm gonna fast forward through this. First, turn on the stove. Second, find a piece of aluminum. You should have one laying around if you're a real human. And if you're not, you're about to be a real human because you're gonna have one laying around soon. Piece of aluminum. Uh, that was like a uh, one millimeter or so. It was uh, nothing special, super cheap. You can get those at um, Lowe's or you know equivalent. Uh, what do they always call it in, pod or in uh, YouTube videos? Home centers. I would hate to, to call it Lowe's. Oh, my sponsors might get pissed. <laughs> Isn't this exciting? Um, the process is happening right now. I guess I should have put a thermometer on that, just, just for, I don't know, having a, so we have some kind of action-packed adventure. I, I've got the EEV blog uh, multimeter. It's got a thermometer thing on it. It's pretty useful for things like this. Oh, well. Okay. So you talk about watching paint dry. Will this work? Will heat 
heat uh, effectively solder, heat activated solder paste. Hmm. Uh, talk about a real nail biter. So you wait, and then you wait, and you wait some more. Now here's what I think is cool. I want to skip ahead a little bit here, and then I got bored, and it, I could smell a few fumes, and so you could argue that this isn't perfect for the house. If you solder, you already got cancer anyway, that way I figure, but um, if you, um, you will smell stuff, and it's one of those things where, okay, the whole point of this video is can you reflow solder in your kitchen? Your wife would smell it and go, what the hell is that? For sure. Like, it's, it's, but it's not bad. Like, it doesn't, I mean, it's not like you're huffing polyurethane from, you know, 30 years ago or whatever. It's not that bad, but you definitely do smell it. So anyway, I got bored and I was like, you know what? Uh, I need to turn the fan on. Let's, let's have an action-packed sequence of me turning the fan on. Ready? And go. There it is. And in doing so, uh, I missed the money shot. So... <laughs> <laughs> we all wanted to see that solder being sucked up and turned it from that gray goo into, into T-1000 stuff. Well, guess what? It didn't happen. I mean, it happened, but you're not going to see it. <laughs> uh, well, I shouldn't have got bored. So that kind of shows you something. It, it, it's not incredibly fast. and It's boring. And you do have to sit there for a minute. So, uh, you know, factor that in to whether you want to do this or not. Okay, so now it's still hot. Um, and I'm adjusting the LEDs that are off. And you can see one in the dead center. Uh, it's definitely uh, off. One, I'm gonna, getting ready to work on that now. But this is the big advantage to using a hot plate, whether it's your stove or one of them $30 jobs on, on Amazon or whatever. If they have them at Walmart, I hear. Um, you have the ability, if things go wrong, to correct them. In an oven, you don't have that option. Now, you could argue that using reflow would be better, but th this is kind of a two birds and one stone thing. Now, one thing I didn't think about was how big this aluminum uh, sheet is. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to be stable because I can't get as close to the PCB as I prefer. So that's something to think about. I guess the aluminum only has to be as large as, as the, um, the PCB or maybe slightly, maybe the size of the, the burner, the heater itself. Okay, so here we can see I'm not gonna be looking at you. Hope that's okay. Here we can see some high-res pictures I took. If you zoom in, uh, some of these LEDs are off-center, and that's the problem. Uh, these I have pretty tight mechanical strengths or reach constraints. There we go. Uh, this needs to fit in with the uh, very specific mechanical design for the panel that goes on top of it. And so you can see right here, these two don't look the same as these two. That gap is different. Like if this was teeth, this would not be a supermodel right here. Now, these are pretty good, pretty good, and then these get close again, and these have a far space. So clearly this LED here is moved a little bit over you know, to the left. And so let's look at a different one. There we go, we'll zoom, focus in the back. Same thing, so you can see there's flaws. Now the reason this occurs is because there was too much solder paste applied, and too much solder paste causes the LED to float. There's not enough, these LEDs weigh so little, they have so little mass that they don't force down and I don't think it'd be a problem with a full-blown chip or whatever, anything with any real pins on it, but um, it, because it has it has enough weight to, to counteract this. But for these little bitty baby parts where you have very tight mechanical strengths, restraints, constraints, there we go, <laughs> really tight mechanical constraints, it can be a real problem. So um, when I had these uh, very similar boards made at JLC PCB, I had none of these issues. They were all perfect for whatever that's worth. So. Um, I guess the, the, the big takeaway, here, let, let me talk to you. The big takeaway here is that um, I still had trouble getting the perfect amount of solder paste in, uh, even with the stencil. Uh, when I was doing it just by hand and just squirting the stuff in there and just kind of guessing, kind of ended up in a similar position, a uh, similar, uh, I guess you could say, uh, similar quantity of, of goo going in there ultimately. A uh, similar number of LEDs that are goofed. So. Um, I don't know what the lesson here is, but for LEDs, it's tough. 0805 LEDs, 0805 LEDs, it's tough. It's um, probably not near as bad with other chips and whatnot. Okay, and so despite subtle shifting, we can see that, uh, well, I guess some of these LEDs aren't on. Uh, they all work. Let me tell you this. Uh, this was one particular preset on the synthesizer, the Reagan's Revenge synthesizer, and this particular preset didn't need all these lights on, but they all do work. So even if, even a little bit of shift isn't really going to have a functional impact unless that functional impact is somehow 
aesthetic impact. It doesn't have a functional impact, let's just say that. So the reflow worked, I'm content with this. I do wish there was a way that I could control the volume going into uh, the stencil uh, a little bit better, regulate that on a tighter level in the way that like a real pick and place machine type setup would do. Again, I don't know what I did wrong, but I definitely put too much on somehow, because I you scrape, so whatever. So if you have any questions about reflow soldering, uh, hit me up. I mean, I'm still fairly new to it, but it doesn't seem that hard. You just put it on, heat it up, and, it, and you have to address issues. And that's the whole point of, the, of using the hot plate as opposed to, um, you know, what, what, like a, the oven or whatever, because the oven doesn't allow you to tinker on the fly. And I found that very valuable. Now, again, you could always get the hot air out if you have that option. Um, you get the hot air out and play. I see no downsides using the stove. Um, if the wife isn't home, as we talked about. <laughs> if the wife's around, she won't allow it. And there's nothing to it. Like I said, there was a little bit of chemical smell. Just a little bit. It wasn't bad. Um, it was the same chemical smell that I, I smelled whenever I was uh, using hot air here in my dungeon. So I don't know. Uh, I, I see it as perfect. I don't have any uh, desire to buy uh, a hot plate now. That's for sure. So this works. Now I just need to figure out how to get the right amount of quantity on there. Good luck, guys. Uh, you know, you follow me on Twitter, Brandon underscore Drury. I've gotten into Twitter lately. Um, hit like hit, and, and hit some comments. I'm uh, trying to make a living here. <laughs> Over now.